This is an introduction to causal models. We're going to look at how we can draw pictures showing how variables relate to each other in a causal sense. Now, here's the basic idea of what we're going to be drawing. Each variable is going to be represented by a circle, and an arrow going to a variable means that the, var the variable that is the origin of the arrow causes the other variable. So here we have both A and B contribute to C. For example, suppose we were studying job satisfaction. That would be our dependent variable on the um, right side. And we're predicting that both intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation predict job satisfaction. Intrinsic motivation is just how much you just like doing the, your, your job because it's satisfying, because it's fun, because it causes, it's meaningful. The work itself is valuable. And extrinsic uh, motivation is what you get from it, what people give you typically pay. So we could predict that both intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation predict job satisfaction. And it would look like this, uh, this model here. So this is the basic idea with causal modeling. Now we would we could also put on either betas or b's to show what the coefficients are. Now remember, if we have a b, that that's a coefficient and it has units, and for each point a goes up, b would go up so many points, or, or c would go up so many points also if b was held constant. Here we've got betas which are a lot like uh, correlations. And so they have the, intuitively the same meaning of correlation. So here we have the, uh, uh, for this type of job, A was related to C with a beta of 0 0.20, and we put a star by it, and we're using the, uh, the classic notation of one star is P less than 0 0.05, two stars is less than 0 0.01, if we had really, strong correlations, we'd have three stars, P's less, P less than 0 0.001. And for B, the beta was 0 0.35. It was even stronger, but it's still in the P less than 0 0.01 category. And then we also note that the what the R squared is, and here it equals 0 0.16. That means that 16% of the variation in C is uh, predicted by A and B. Now, a lot of times these R squareds aren't very high. It means there's 84% of the um, uh, variation in job satisfaction here is caused by other things. And that could be like the, the person that you're working for, the type of work that you're doing, your personality. There's a million things that are going to influence job satisfaction. So by just looking at two, we're not going to get a very high R squared. So this is how both A and B could contribute to C. Now let's uh, look at an example. Let's go back to the uh, example that we looked at previously where we're predicting, we're predicting insomnia from lots of different variables. We had sex, age, education, whether somebody had a partner, smoking, exercise, whether they had asthma, depression, anxiety. And this first column here, the univariate models, just gives the simple R between two variables. So let's say we were interested in the relationship between age and insomnia. Here we've got an R of 0.11, and it's got four stars. And in this chart, four stars means P less than 0 0.001. So if we were to draw this, it would look like, uh, this we call this univariate modeling because there's only one uh, predictor variable predicting our dependent variable um, and we're going to report the pearson r sometimes this is called a zero order correlation that's kind of an older term for it but you'll see that expression sometimes and so we have age as one variable here predicting insomnia and we've got the r written there equals 0.11 and now I went to the standard notation of three stars for less than 0.01. And here we have R squared equals 0.12. So what does this mean? It means as people get older, they have more insomnia. Age doesn't predict a 
uh, most insomnia, but it predicts about 12% of the uh, uh, insomnia, insomnia. And that's because as you get older, you just need less sleep. Uh, it's kind of like you maximize your, your need for sleep when you're a small baby, then it goes down, and then you're a teenager and you need lots of sleep. And then as you get older, you gradually uh, need less. And that can contribute to insomnia, having this uh, lowered need, lower need for uh, sleep. So that's a univariate model where we just have one uh, independent variable, age, uh, predicting the dependent variable, insomnia. Now let's go for something more complicated. Let's go for this step two model, or this model number two predicting insomnia, where we have lots of variables, sex, age, education, whether somebody has a partner, smoking, exercise, and then asthma. And so basically what we could be asking is, does asthma contribute to uh, insomnia beyond all these other variables that we know uh, have a history of contributing to insomnia? So we've got all of these beta coefficients here, and we can draw this in an image like this. So here is how we draw a multivariate model of this model with seven variables in it. We have the first sex, age, education, partnership, smoking, and exercise were the control variables. And then we add in asthma there. And we put the betas by each line. Now we could put Bs, but here we've got betas that we're reporting. And we're putting stars according to their significance. One star for P less than 0.05, two for less than 0.01, and three less for, than 0.001. And so what do we have? We have sex. Here we have zero equals female and one equals male. So this negative numbers, as you go from female to male, insomnia goes down. So that means males have less insomnia than, than females. So sex is a, a predictor, and it's P less than 0.01. We can be real sure of that. Here we have age. Even with all these other control variables, age is still a significant predictor of uh, insomnia. Education is not a significant predictor of insomnia. Partnership, whether one's alone or with somebody, doesn't significantly uh, predict insomnia either. Um, smoking does. People who have who smoke have more insomnia, and uh, exercise is also a significant predictor. Um, the more exercise people have, the less insomnia they have. And then asthma is also a significant predictor. Even when controlling for exercise and smoking and all these other variables, uh, asthma is something that um, appears to predict insomnia. So this is how we re report uh, or draw a picture of the causal model of these seven variables predicting uh, uh, insomnia. Now, what we're going to do now is I want to show you how, how to draw a picture of a causal model on Excel. Now, I'm not an expert in drawing on Excel, but I can draw simple things. So I'm going to kind of do this by trial and error. So let's just draw a, a univariate model of age predicting insomnia. So I am going to go to insert, and I'm going to uh, do shapes. Now, if you have a drawing tool, you can use draw, but for insert shape seems to work really well. And I'm going to choose this oval and circle. And I'm going to start at about here. And I hold down my mouse, and I draw a circle. And so I get a circle like that. And I've got the shape format up there. And I'm going to change the shape to, I don't want any fill. And let's, uh, uh, the outline, I'm going to make uh, black. And I'm also going to make it a little thicker. I, uh, two and a quarter points is the default size they give. And I like two and a quarter points. So there's our first circle. Now I'm going to copy this. I'm going to do Control C. And I'm going to click out. I'm going to do Control V. And I get another circle. And I'm going to uh, uh, select it. 
and I'm going to go someplace where I can drag it. I'm going to drag it up here. And so there we have two circles. And now I'm going to insert uh, another shape. I'm going to go for a single headed arrow. And I'm going to start over here. I'm going to, it gives me a few key points. I'm going to go from there. And I'm going to draw this arrow over to here. I've got an arrow. Now notice I didn't get the two circles exact. So I'm going to click on this circle and I'm going to use the up arrow to push it up till I get the arrow straight. So now I've got an arrow. Let's make the arrow. I selected the arrow. I clicked on the arrow. I'm going to go to shape outline. I'm going to change it to black and I'm also going to choose a, the two and a quarter weight. And so there we've got um, the shape. And now I'm going to put the words inside. So I'm going to go insert, in, insert shape, and I'm going to use a text box. So I choose the text box, and now I draw a text box there. And I'm going to type age in here. Now that's kind of small. So I'm going to select age, and I'm going to make it bigger. And I'll make it bold too. I don't need that box as big. Oops, let's get it over here. And uh, there we've got uh, age in there. Now I can put it more in the middle. I don't want the frame on that box. Let's take the shape outline and say no outline. And there I've got age in the box there. Now I'm going to select that. I'm going to copy it and unselect it. I'm going to do control V. Oops, control Z. Let me try that again. Uh, I'm going to select this, control copy, click out, do control V, and I've got age there. I'm going to draw that over here, and I'm going to change this to insomnia now. Let's see if I can get that to fit in the circle. Okay, now, now it's covering up my circle, so if I right-click on this, um, let's see, what can I do? Um, right-click, I can send it back is a good option, so I'll send it behind the, uh, uh, the circle. Send it back makes it the bottom layer, so the circle's on top of it. And now I can, let's insert another text box shapes text box i'm going to put um my r up here so control i r control i space equals 0.11 and three stars now i'm going to select that and make that a little bit bigger i'll click up the font size there okay and then i and let's get rid of that um um, uh, outline, if I click on the no outline, it remembers that. Okay, so that's uh, down there. Now let's insert another, let's put a note down here. Insert a shapes text box. And uh, APA style figures often have notes. I'm going to do control I, note, control I, colon. And I'm going to say what those three stars mean. Any abbreviations that aren't, or I need to put the, abbre the meaning in it in there. So control I and then control I P, control I less than 0 0.001. And let's, uh, let's also put R squared in there. Oh, actually, I didn't get that in a text box, but that, that works. Fine, and then we've got uh, uh, Control I, Shift R, Control I. I'm going to do square t just two equals 0.012, and now I'm going to make that two into a subscript. And let's go up to Home, play with the font, and make that a superscript. I'll do OK. And so now we've got the, uh, uh, the, the note saying what this causal model means. 
So that's how we can draw a simple uh, drawing in Excel uh, to, 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 to make a simple uh, uh, causal model.